Hello YouTube, thank you for joining me for another video. This is Living History 66, and today I'm going to be going over the haul that I just got yesterday. It is so big, in fact, that I had to utilize my entire couch. I originally was going to pick up two items. Uh, the first one I'm going to go over right here. This is a pocket Bible, New Testament, Army and Navy edition. Inside cover says James R. Leahy, Camp Jackson, South Carolina, First World War, Knights of Columbus, 1918. First page has got his name. There's his address. He lived right here in Syracuse, New York. And he was artillery in uh, Camp Jackson. First page says, If anything happens to me, send word to Mrs. James Leahy. And there's the address. So, a very awesome piece. I love collecting local veteran uh, items. Nothing in the back, but the book is still in decent shape. Also, I have his obituary. Uh, he was born, I think, in 1895 and died in 1967. But here's his obituary. So, an awesome, awesome little collection right there. Also, the guy who I bought this from uh, found this at an estate sale, and he looked him up and gave me a screenshot of his service record, or his registration, I should say. So, I was getting this. I paid, I think, 50 bucks for that, which I don't mind because it's named, and it's a local veteran, too, lived in Syracuse. I was going to get that. And I was going to get this, which is a really nice trunk. Real nice suitcase on the top here. 8th Infantry Division. And a whole bunch of stickers. With a bunch of pinup girls on it. From different states. So that's pretty cool. And Leroy F. Hollier is uh, printed there on the top. And if we open it... This is some pretty cool stuff in here. The original customs tags, dated uh, 1957. Got a um, uniform express receipt here. Uh, I don't think this has a year, but it's uh, 1228. I think that says Jordan, New York, which is pretty close to where I live. Used to live in Jordan, too, so that's, again, another awesome piece of local history and deposits that's pretty cool got his signatures on there so when I was talking to the gentleman um, you know we were calling and trying to figure out a place to meet up and whatnot to, he said I also have two jackets that belong to the same guy who has the suitcase I said awesome I'll take those two uh, we planned on $55 for the suitcase because he wanted 40 for the suitcase originally and uh, he wanted 15 for the both of those so I said absolutely I'll take those I'll even pay you. I'll just give you 60 bucks for them why not and uh, he goes yeah I also have this and I have that and I got a couple of these and I got a couple of those so he goes you know what I'll, I'm just gonna pack up a whole tote of stuff and uh Pretty much just take what you want. I'll give you a you know I'll give you a deal on it. I'm trying to thin out my collection. So these coats also belonged to Leroy Hollier. It's a nice Ike jacket. Mr. Hollier was in the Korean War. Got a couple insignia patches on the Ike jacket. Eighth Division there on the shoulder. This one's in beautiful shape. Uh, could not find a date on it. There's a tag on the inside. But 
No date from the looks of it. So. But there's an Ike jacket and also his trench coat. Also right up here. H0865, it's his laundry number. H0865 right there. This thing is huge. Huge and heavy, warm. Eighth division, again with the rank, which is a spec five, I believe. So if we open up this thing over here, the right hand side of the jacket you will find the date tag May 27th 1953 so very happy to have these I know I definitely want it didn't want to have a named collection get separated so everything else here however besides the two jackets the suitcase and this little Bible everything else he gave to me for a hundred bucks. I was not planning on getting anything else, but altogether, I paid $150 for everything in here. But while we're talking about jackets and whatnot, we'll go over to this one. Which again has the rank. Second armored division, hell on wheels. Right here, you got a whole bunch of laundry numbers, E2505. Uh, this one is dated, however. This one is dated 1953 as well. This just belonged to a different person. Bear with me for just one second. Uh, dated May 20th, 1953. This one, however, does have some mothing. It's got it right here on the collar pocket a little bit on the sleeve and then uh, on the back here back of the collar so got that and also this Vietnam era uh, Air Force jacket no patches or anything like that but there is there is this tag on the inside so that's cool also got a duffel bag. Big little duffel bag. Sergeant Thomas is written on the front. I don't see any, uh, no date. Or anything like that, but it's got the backpack straps on it and everything. So. Happy to get a lot of named stuff in this, uh, in this collection. Uh, right down here. Got a, we'll go over this one, uh, just a training grenade. It says RFX on it, um, which is Richmond, Richmond Foundry Company, I think. I don't think this is World War II, but I do have a dummy grenade. It's a lemon grenade instead of the pineapple grenade, so. You got a training round right here, even on the back it says, uh, Cartridge drill, M18A1, 20 millimeter gun. So this is a training uh, 20 millimeter round. Right here, 50 caliber round. This one is pre-World War II. This is a Remington Arms 1933. Also right here, I have a picture of a soldier. U.S. soldier with a uh, bolt-action rifle there. I'm not sure if that's a 1903. On the back it says, You can't see a pot on me in this one either. A uh, pot was talking about his stomach. He doesn't have a beer belly or anything like that. He doesn't have a pot. That's a cool little piece right there. And this is easily the weirdest thing in my military collection to date. This is a Doughboy prophylactic kit. As you see, it says to be used within two hours after contact. After two hours, the effectiveness becomes less and less, and it gives you directions. 
I'll let you guys pause this if you want. Because as a guy, this definitely made me cringe while reading this. Let you, let you pause that if you want. That's nasty. <laughs> this was a uh, anti-venereal disease kit that was given out during World War II to GIs to prevent from STDs and whatnot. So, like I said, easily the weirdest thing in my military collection. Uh, over here was a bunch of patches. Um, I have most of these, but these uh, the newer ones I don't collect. So, I think this is the 8th Medical Brigade. There's three of the colored ones and five of the subdued ones. And I think this is the 807th Medical Brigade, something like that. Uh, two U.S. Army stripes there, or strips, whatever. Uh, U.S. Forces in Guam. Uh, Missouri State Guard couple of random anchors and a uh, insignia for rank. Fourth Armored Division here. I think this is the 83rd Infantry Division. Pretty sure this is fake. Pretty sure this is fake. Um, two rank insignias here. Two World War II U.S. Army Air Force insignia. First Army. And I'm not sure what that is. Uh, the ones I will be keeping, though, uh, there's a Korea tab. That's pretty cool. I think this is Good Conduct. Ribbon right there. 18-month overseas service. Oops. And the uh, Army Air Force Far East. This is a nice one, so I'll be keeping this one. And also, there was a print of a random tank. Not sure what it is, or what country it's from, or what era this is from. And uh, two ammo cans here. Uh, this one is made by United. And this one is uh, SCF. I don't think those are World War II, but you can always store stuff in them, so... Back over to here, a uh, couple toy whistles from the looks of it. This one's made by Commander, and this one is made, it's a metal whistle made in Japan. They have a uh, signaling light uh, for flight decks. This is pretty cool. So red color disc in there. This is an MX-993U, made by Fulton. I have two of the angled flashlights, but I don't have one of these. So, a clear plastic cone will be placed over the top. Turn on the light. You put whatever color disc you wanted in there. You know, you're basically signaling to people on the flight deck. Uh, I have a civil defense helmet right here with gray painting on it. I think this is an earlier version. I'm not sure. Looks like the original webbing. So that's pretty cool. And then a... Uh, if anybody can help me out with this one, it's a Czechoslovakian helmet. But I don't know what era this is. I'm, I don't know if this is a World War II helmet because it has the... Uh, it's got the liner here on the inside, which is uh, leather. Leather strap. And uh, check this out. It's got some writing on the inside of it. Looks like ink. Not, not marker or anything like that. But I cannot read that, so. But that was kind of an interesting piece. Over here, got a, uh, what is this? Uh, Bren magazine. This is a British pouch. And on the inside here, it is dated 1942. Snap still works and everything, so that's cool. Don't have one of these. 
and then a couple of bandoliers of some sorts. I don't know what country these are from. I don't know what era these are from. Either Vietnam or World War II, I'm guessing. There's two of them. It's a canvas material. And there is a stamp on the back. But it's too faint. I can't really, can't really make it out. Uh, I know there's a stamp on each of these. Yeah, there's the other one. Uh, I can't exactly read it. But this, this is what I'm really excited about. This is a Army Air Force summer flying cap for pilots. As you can see right here, it says Army Air Force. If I can get this to focus, there we go. Army Air Forces. It's missing the ear pieces right here. There'd be a couple of ear pieces that would help connect your headset, but other than that, this is a really, really awesome thing. I'm gonna put this on a mannequin head so it you can really see the uh, you know how this is supposed to look. Flip it inside out here. We have Army Air Forces again. And check it out. We have initials and possibly a service number. Leather brim here, still soft. That's very cool. Real excited about this though. Here's the chin strap too. Chin strap is still soft. So yeah, this will look much better uh, on a head than on my hand, but that's what it's supposed to look like. But I think that is all I have for this collection. I mean, you know, not you know, oh that's it, because it's still a lot, but I will be moving here in about two months or so. And I'm really hoping to get everything, you know, get a nice coat rack, display all these things. I'll be able to put stuff in the trunk and whatnot. So, really happy with the way this collection is coming along. We have some really weird items. And we got some named items, a lot of named items in this haul. So, very cool. It's going to keep me busy definitely with uh, research. But I want to thank you guys again, as always, for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing. And again, I am on Instagram as livinghistory66. And if you find me on there, I'll be photographing a whole bunch of stuff and putting a whole bunch of this stuff up here today. So, again, I want to thank you guys. Stay safe, and we'll see you in the next video.